Hey motorheads, today we're going to be adjusting the rocker arms on this small block Chevrolet so that we can preload the hydraulic lifters in it. Uh, this process that you'll learn today you can use on Ford, Chevy, Chrysler, four cylinder, V6, it doesn't matter. As long as it has a hydraulic style camshaft in it, you'll be able to preload the lifter and get that setting perfect. Before we get into the adjustment of the rocker arms, I want to go back over the four stroke cycles with you really quick. Uh, these cycles are very important on the time that we're going to use to adjust the rock arms. And what I mean by that is the valve needs to be completely closed before we adjust that rock arm. So let's look at the strokes really quick. The intake stroke, the piston is on its way down. The intake valve only is open. It draws the fresh air fuel mixture into the cylinder. Once it reaches bottom dead center and starts its way back up, the compression stroke then compresses that mixture with both valves closed. Once the piston reaches top dead center with both valves closed, the spark plug ignites it driving the piston back down on the power stroke. Once the piston's at bottom dead center, the exhaust valve begins to open and the piston pushes the exhaust out the exhaust valve. What stroke are we ready for next? That's right, we're ready to restart them all over again, start with the intake stroke. Before that piston reaches top dead center on the exhaust stroke, the intake valve begins to creep open to start its stroke. During this time, both valves are open slightly, depending on the cam. This is called valve overlap. We're going to use valve overlap and the firing order of the engine to determine how and when to adjust these rocker arms. We're going to use cylinders adjacent to one another, or a sister cylinder if you would, to determine when to adjust that cylinder. And I'll go over that in a minute when we use the firing order. I mentioned using the firing order to do this rocker arm adjustment is the easiest way. And it doesn't matter, Ford, Chevy, Chrysler, whatever it is, as long as you know the firing order, it'll make your job a lot faster. I've seen guys adjust rocker arms and turn that engine over 200 times before they get them all adjusted. This method that we're gonna to use today just a small turn of the engine, just a small rotation every time we'll get that next cylinder ready to go for uh, adjustment. The firing order here for this small block Chevy that we're doing today is 18436572. Here's the way you'll write it out to know how to rock and adjust your engine and we'll talk about that here in just a second. You're going to go four down because that's a V8 and we're going to split it down the middle. We're then going to start with these the last four of the firing order and start over here. This is the cylinder that we will rock in order to adjust this cylinder. What is rock and adjust? Rock is basically that valve overlap that we just talked about. I wrote it down here. Rock equals the exhaust opens and closes and intake just starts to open or overlap. Adjustment would be to remove all loose lash and tighten an additional three-fourths turn on the nut of the rocker arm to preload the lifter. This is the lifter that rides on the camshaft and if I put the push rod in it you can see the center of the lifter collapsing. Now it will only collapse until oil pressure from the oil pump pumps this lifter up through these little holes on the sides. And the block has corresponding holes to hydraulically pump this lifter up and take out the lash between the rocker arm and the tip of the valve at all times. If you have a solid lift cam or if you're working on an engine like I know a lot of people uh, will redo their four-wheeler engines and set the lash on those, you would actually use a feeler gauge between the tip of the rocker arm and the tip of the valve and adjust that lash to a certain specification. These are hydraulic, so we'll be setting or preloading that lifter by tightening the nut on the rocker arm to push the push rod down in the lifter in order to get that small cup off of that retaining wire located on the inside. The rocker arms we're gonna be using today are by SBI. I'll show you how to install those. The first thing you want to do though is make sure all your push rods on the inside of the engine are in the center of each lifter. Once you've established that, you take the rocker arm, place it over the stud. Then I usually add some lubricant to the bottom of this rock rocker ball, either white lithium grease or a good engine lubricant. 
you're going to place the rocker ball or pivot in the center of the rocker and then this nut will go on. The nut has got a flat side and a cone shaped side. The flat side will go down towards the pivot and you'll also notice that there are some bite marks in the top of the nut. The nut has been swedged so that it becomes a lock nut. So once we get this adjustment made, uh, it will stay right where our adjustment is forever. I've labeled the engine with tape so that you can see what cylinders are located. Cylinder 1, 3, 5, and 7 on a small block Chevrolet I know are on the driver's side. 2, 4, 6, and 8 are located on the passenger side. Your engine may be different and it may have a different firing order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It doesn't matter as long as you reference the board like we did before. You write your firing order down the same manner, you can still use this process no matter what the engine or the firing order. We're now going to rock cylinder number one, which means the exhaust opens and closes and the intake just starts to open, or we're going to get cylinder one into overlap. For this, we're going to look in the lifter valley area, and these are our two lifters. We know that this lifter leads to the intake port, and this lifter push rod leads to the exhaust port. We can see that the bigger port here, the valve is on the inside. So this is our intake, this is our exhaust. You also notice I've tightened the nuts down on the rocker arms until I do have some movement. You don't want to tighten them down all the way yet. That's what our adjustment is for. So I just have them taken the slack out. I'm now going to turn the engine over on the front of the crankshaft and we're going to monitor in the lifter valley area on that cylinder one. Again, we're looking for the exhaust valve and you'll see this lifter starting to come up. That would mean the exhaust valve would be opening. It will go back down and when we see the lifter right next to it start to come up, we're going to even them out right like that. Now the intake valve is starting to open. We're now on valve overlap on cylinder one. What cylinder is ready to adjust? Cylinder six. We're now going to go to its sister cylinder located across the engine and we're going to adjust these two rockers because these two rockers are now on the base circle of the camshaft. You can see both lifters are all the way down and that's where we want to be to do this adjustment. I'm going to tighten the nuts down and periodically I'm going to feel the up and down play on the end of the rocker nose. I just want to take that slack out. I do not want to preload that lifter or push that push rod down into the center of the lifter. I'm just getting it right there to that point. Now don't be fooled by the side movement. I could continue to tighten this nut down and you would still be able to move that rocker arm side to side because the plunger in the center of that lifter is very weak. The spring is. You can see me moving it right now. That movement, if we look on the inside, is the lifter moving away from that clip that we talked about earlier. So right now I just have that slack, all of what we would call the lash, removed from this valve train. Once you're at that point, you'll place your ratchet on here to where you can make three quarters of a turn. This would be half, three quarters would be lined up directly down this way. I did an additional three quarters of a turn. Let's look inside the lifter valley now and you can see that our plunger in the center of that lifter is not touching that clip. We don't want that clip to be touched by that because it could come loose on the inside of the engine. So this is our lifter preload. I can now do the rocker right next to it. I can adjust the exhaust. And there wasn't any certain order. If I wanted to adjust this one before this one, it doesn't matter. But we know that both of these are ready because we did our rock and adjust sequence. Right there. Now I'm going to do the three quarters of a turn. There's half, there's three quarter. And I always look back in the lifter area and make sure that that plunger is not touching that wire. 
and that I have some good preload on the lifter. In other words, some lash to fill up with oil. All right, what do we do next? We're gonna see what next cylinder is up to rock. Cylinder number eight is next to rock or to get into overlap. Now I want you to notice how much I have to turn the crankshaft before we're ready to adjust two more rockers. All right, here's cylinder eight and the exhaust valve is already open so it's gonna be closing and the intake valve will open. So I'll start rotating and right there, that was it. So just a slight amount of turning and now cylinder eight is in overlap. Which one are we ready to adjust? According to our chart, we're ready to adjust cylinder five. If we look in the lifter valley area, cylinder five is definitely on the base circle. We're gonna adjust these two rockers and move to the next. Now we're ready to rock cylinder four and adjust cylinder seven according to our chart. I'm gonna show you on the front of the crankshaft just how little movement that takes. The exhaust valve is closing and the intake valve is starting to open. That's all the more we had to rotate the crankshaft in order to be ready now to adjust the two on cylinder seven. Okay, I've rotated it again slightly and now that I have three in overlap, the intake valve is just starting to open. According to my chart, I'm ready to adjust two. Both of those are on the base circle and I'll start taking the play out of the rocker arm. Now we're gonna start on the second half of the engine to adjust. We're now going to rock cylinder six and adjust one. You'll notice that cylinder six when we get to the engine is the one that's already been adjusted previously. So all of our rockers that we'll be putting into overlap now and lifters are going to be previously adjusted. Now that we're doing cylinders uh, to get them into overlap that have already been adjusted, the lifters down inside here will not only move, but you can also see the rocker arms moving too. So this is cylinder five, getting ready to adjust eight. And you can see that this intake rocker just started to move. Now we'll adjust eight. Okay, that's the last rocker in this sequence. Now we're gonna go back, start at the beginning. We're gonna rock one, which should be ready to go. And we're gonna look at six. We're just gonna go back in and double check, or as I like to say, so I'll sleep better at night, knowing that when I button this engine up, that everything is perfect. We definitely have that adjusted correctly. Now I'm going to rock eight and check five. Definitely off the wire, still have some spring load or some hydraulic room for that lifter. Rock four. And check seven. Rock three. And check two. Rock six, should be ready to go. And check one. Rock five. And check eight. Looks good, off the wire there. Rock seven. And check four. Rock two and check three. Looks perfect. Okay, we're finished up with the engine, and like I said, it doesn't matter. Ford, Chevy, Dodge, whatever the firing order, write it down, split it up. You should be able to adjust your hydraulic lifters. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. I'd like to thank Tecton Tools for one thing. If you haven't checked out Tecton Tools' website, you need to check them out. They've got some great tools. They've helped us out on this project today, and we hope you'll join us for our next video.